Hello, my name is Mr. Hutzpeth and I'm the Director of Maths at Bishop Chadwick Catholic Education Trust. This is a GCC calculator skills session that I'm going to take you through today. What you'll need for this session is a scientific calculator similar to the one on the screen, the Casio FX 83GT Plus um, or equivalent. If you have a calculator um, with a different make, then you should be able to still follow this session as most of the functions are in the same position or similar positions. You'll also need for this session um, a pen and a piece of paper because I'm going to go through the different functions on the scientific calculator and then set some questions for you to practice and then that will be followed with the answers. It's vitally important that you know how to use all of the following calculator functions for your GCSE maths exams. So I'm going to go through all the functions on the scientific calculator that you need for your GCSE exams with the exception of the trigonometric ones, sine, cos and tan. They're a little bit more detailed and you need to know which ones to use for different types of questions. So your maths teacher will explain those to you. Uh, remember, two out of the three papers are calculator papers. I looked at a calculator paper recently and you could get 16 out of the 80 marks available. So that's 20 percent just from just from knowing how to use all of the functions on this scientific calculator. The basics, so assuming you already know how to turn the calculator on and off. So obviously the on button is in the top right hand corner and to switch the calculator off click shift and then down to the AC button which is just to the right of the delete button on your calculator. This is important when your calculator misbehaves. I think we've all been in the situation where um, you have something on your calculator and you, and you just want to clear the screen and you don't know how to do it. So in order to do that, you just press the following force button. So you just click on shift and then number nine. And then it comes up on your, your screen, clear question mark and just choose the number three where it says all. And then just click on equals for yes. And then click on the AC button. And it'll clear the screen so you go back to the start. OK. Directional pad very useful, so that's the. Circular button in the middle of your calculator. Very useful for navigating to the right, to the left, up and down when you're typing in numbers and um, other functions. So we call that the, the directional pad. OK, so next thing, very important button or function, S the SD function. So we use this to change answers from fractions into decimals and vice versa. So we'll come across that later on. In the top left hand corner, you've got your shift function or sometimes called second function. This allows you to use the second functions that are above the main functions and they're in yellow on your calculator. So if you want to use any of those functions above the main functions and above the, above the main buttons, you have to press the shift um, button first. There are two display modes on your calculator. Uh, one is shift mode one and the other one is shift mode two. Um, so this is particularly important for fractions. So you obviously do a lot of work on fractions at um, GCC Maths. The best one to use is the first one, shift mode one, 
So if you press that on your calculator, shift mode one, and then just type in one again. When you use the fraction button on your calculator, if you put your calculator in, into that shift mode one, fractions will be displayed in this form here, which is what we what you should be used to in your maths lessons. If you're in the other mode, shift mode two, when you type in a fraction, it'll be in this mode, uh, it'll be in this form here. So two fifths would appear like that on your screen. I would advise you if that does happen, just to press shift mode one and then one again on your calculator to get it back into the first mode. OK, so we'll start off with fractions. So we're going to do two thirds, add one half. So just make sure your calculator is in that mode, shift mode one and then one again. To type in two thirds, this is your fraction button here. So you just type that fraction button. And it appears like this on your screen. Type in two on the top. Use your directional pad. To arrow down, type in three. Use your directional pad. To type to the right. And then type add. Now we need to type in the fraction one half, so we have to type the fraction button again. Type in one on the top. Use your directional pad to type down to the bottom, type in two. Then type uh, your directional pad on the right. Press equals. And it should give you the answer seven over six. So that's given us a, an improper fraction, a top heavy fraction. Then we'll have a look at the second one. So we start off by just typing in four. Subtract. Now this time you need to type in a mixed number. Three and a half. So to type in a mixed number, you need to press on your calculator shift and then the fraction button. So shift and then the fraction button. And it should appear um, on your calculator um, as a mixed number. And all you need to do is type in three and a half. So you type in the three, use the directional pad to type across to the right. Type in one on the top. Use your directional pad to move to the bottom. Type in two. And then if you press equals, it should give you the answer a half. A common mistake students make when they type in three and a half is to type in the fraction a half and then use this directional pad to put a three at the front. And that is wrong. That will give you the wrong answer because that means three multiplied by a half, which isn't the same as three and a half, obviously. So please, when you type in a mixed number, you've got to use shift and then the fraction button. OK, one extra thing before I give you some to have a go at yourself. If you want to change or if you need to change an improper fraction or top heavy fraction into a mixed number, so like that one there, seven over six, type your fraction button again. Type in seven over six and press equals. And that should just appear as seven over six on your calculator. If you then just press shift and SD. The calculator will change the answer to one and one sixth. So that's what seven over six is as a mixed number. Working out a fraction of a number. So if you're asked to work out three sevenths of 420 and this is on the calculator paper. Very easy way to do it. Type in the fraction three sevenths. So press your fraction button. Type in three on the top and seven on the bottom. Make sure you arrow across to the right. In maths of means multiply. So just type in multiply and then type in 420. And if you press equals, that'll give you the answer 180. 
if this came up on the non-calculator paper and you're asked to work out three sevenths of 420, easiest way to do it would be to work out one seventh first of all by doing 420 divided by seven and then find three sevenths by multiplying that answer by three and you would get 180. So you can do that on your calculator as well, but the quickest way is just to type in three sevenths multiplied by 420. Right, so there's three for you to have a go at there. So if you just pause the video and have a go at those three questions, and then the answers will just be on the next slide. So there's the answers. So the first one, 57 over 40 as an improper fraction, 1 and 17 over 40 as a mixed number. For number 2, 23 over 40 is a fraction. If you change it into a decimal, 0 0.575. And then number 3, 320. Next, we're going to look at the uh, squaring and cubing a number. So there's your two functions for doing that. So there's your x squared. function and there's your um, cubed function. Important you must use brackets um, when dealing with negative numbers so we'll have a look at an example of that in a moment. There's your, your brackets functions on your calculator. So a few to check so if you're going to work out 5 squared on your calculator you just press 5 and then the squared function, press equals, and you should get 25. 5 squared, 5 multiplied by 5 is 25. Likewise, 23 squared, if you just do the same, you should 23 multiplied by 23 gives you 529. 8 cubed, so you just press 8, and then the cubed function, 8 multiplied by 8 multiplied by 8 should give you 512. And this is very important. If you're working out negative six squared, negative six multiplied by negative six, the answer is 36. You must put the negative six in a bracket. So you must press the open bracket first, then negative six. To type in negative six, this is your negative function here, then six, and then close the bracket, then square and then equals and you'll get the answer 36. If you don't put the negative 6 in a bracket, what the calculator will do, it'll just work out 6 squared and leave the negative sign at the front, so it'll give the answer negative 36, which is wrong. We all know that when you multiply a negative by a negative, you get a positive answer. Higher powers. So, if we wanted to work out, for example, 5 to the power of 4, which gives the answer 625, what you would need to do for that, you press 5, first of all. Now, this is your power function here, this one, x with a square raised. So you would just press that function, then you would type in number 4, and that should, if you do that, give you the answer 625. 5 to the power of 4 just means 5 multiplied by 5, multiplied by 5, multiplied by 5. And that gives you 625. Right, there's six questions for you to have a go at yourself. So if you pause the video and have a go at those, just a few little hints there. The second one, negative 13 squared, just means negative 13 in a bracket squared. The cube of 15 just means 15 cubed. And then make sure for both question two and question six, you put those negative numbers in a bracket before you square them for question, before you square for question two and raise by a power of four for question six.
and there are the answers that you, sh that you should get for that one, for those six questions. Next, we're going to look at square rooting a number. So there's your square root function. A few examples there. So if you want to work out the square root of 49, all you do is press the square root function and then type in 49 and then equals and you should get seven for the answer. Likewise, for the second one, square root of 37, you get a decimal answer there, but it's the same method. Be careful with this third example. A lot of students make a mistake with this. If you press the square root function and then 16, before you add on the two, make sure you press the directional pad at the right. So just move the prompt across to the right before you add two. And then you should get the answer six. Square root of 16 is four, four or two is six. If you don't arrow across to the right, the calculator will work out the square root of 16, add two, in other words, the square root of 18, and we don't want to do that. Cube root number. So the cube root function is above the square root function. So you have to press shift and then square root. And it should if it should appear on your screen like this. So if you press those two functions, those two buttons, it should appear like that on your screen. Common mistake students make. In, um, when they try to work out the cube root of a number is to just type in the number three and then the square root function. That means three multiplied by the square root of whatever number you then type in. So that's that's wrong. That'll give you the wrong answer. So a couple to check. So if you press for the first one, shift and then the square root function and then just type in 27. It should give you the cube root of 27 is equal to 3. And then if you have a go at the second one, you don't need to put that in a bracket. The, the negative 1.9 doesn't need to be in a bracket. So if you do that, you should get the answer negative 1.24 for the cube root of negative 1.9. Other roots, so higher roots. So in order to do these questions, you need to press shift and then the power button. So for higher roots, that's above the power function on your calculator. So you just press those two buttons. So if we were going to work out the fifth root of 32, so press your shift and then your power button and then the prompt should be next to this or this on your calculator. So you just type in five and then just use your directional pad to arrow across, type in 32, press equals and you should get the answer two. And then just clear your screen, just press AC, clear your screen and do the same for the second one. So it's shift, and then the power button. So just press those two again. And then just type in 10. It's the 10th root. And then arrow across, type in 1024, and you should get two as the answer. The 10th root of 1024 is two. And there's six questions for you to practice. So again, just pause the video, have a go at those questions. There's the answers. Percentages. So quite a few students 
um, aren't aware of the percentage function on the calculator. So it's there above the open bracket um, function. So you have to press shift open bracket and that's how you get the percentage function on the calculator. So if we wanted to work out 35% of 120, all we need to type in is 35. And then to get percentage, or 30% rather, press shift, open bracket. As mentioned earlier, in maths, of means multiply. So you just type in multiply and then 120, and you should get the answer there, 42. If we wanted to increase 150, for example, by 30% in one step, then all you need to do is add the 30% onto 100%, which obviously gives you 130%, and just work out 130% of 150. So you just type 130, and then for your percent, shift, open bracket, and then multiply by 150, and you should get the answer 195. What about decreasing 150 by 30% in one step? This time you subtract the 30% from 100%, which gives you 70%, and you just do 70% multiplied by 150. So you just type 70, and then shift, open bracket, and then multiply by 150 and you get the answer 105. So there's a few things that you can do with the percent or percentage function on the calculator. There's three for you to have a go at. So again, just pause the video and have a go at those three questions. There's the answers. Prime factors. So just have a look at the uh, an example. So if you were asked to write the number 450 as a product of its prime factors, so if you've done this in class as a non calculate question, you'll be used to drawing the factor tree diagram. You can do it on the calculator and this could come up on the cal uh, calculator paper. So all you need to do is press 450 and then equals. And to write 450 as a product of its prime factors, you just need to press shift and then this function here, which is we call the hours, minutes, seconds one, because what we actually want is this function, the fact function above it. OK, so as I said, type in 450 equals and then just shift the hours, minutes, seconds button and it should come up as 2 multiplied by 3 squared multiplied by 5 squared and that's 450 uh, as a product of its prime factors. So if you have a go at the second one, 375 equals and then just shift hours, minutes, seconds, it should give you three and that multiplied by, and that should read five cubed and not 53. So three multiplied by five cubed, so a mistake on the PowerPoint there. Um, so, two for you to have a go at. I'll just pause the video. Have a go at those two. There's the answers. Drawn graphs. So now this is quite complicated, uh, probably the most complicated thing that I'm going to show you today. But you can use your scientific calculator to. Um, find all the points that you're asked to find that lie on the graph um, 
that uh, the equation of the graph that we've been given there. So the equation of this particular graph is y equals x squared subtract 3x subtract 7. OK, and the first thing we're asked to do is to complete the table. So we're given the x coordinates from negative 3 to positive 3, and we need to find the y coordinates. So one way in which you can do this on your calculator, so we just follow the steps. So first thing you do is to, is to press mode, which is over here. This button, you press mode. Then we're going to select table, which should be number three on your screen. And it should then come up as f of x equals on your calculator. So don't worry about that if you haven't seen that before. All we're going to do now is type in this part of the equation. So the first thing we want to type in is x. Now to type the letter x on your calculator, you have to type the function alpha, the alpha button there. And then if you go down to the close bracket function, you should see the letter x in red just above it. So if you just press that button, x should appear on the screen, capital X. Then we need to type squared, so we know where the squared function is, just there. So just type that function or button. Then subtract, then it's 3x, so we need to type the number 3. Now we need this letter x again, so we know what that is. It's just the alpha and then close bracket. So alpha and then close bracket and the x should appear on the screen. And then we need to subtract 7. So if you do all of that and press equals, you'll get prompt. It'll say start question mark and it'll give you one. What we need to start from is this negative three. So just type in negative three and then equals. It'll then um, have end question mark on your calculator screen and it'll suggest five or mine suggesting five anyway. We don't want that, we want three. So just type three and then equals. Then it'll appear step question mark and that just means the number you're increasing by to get from each x coordinate to the next one. So as you can see, we're going across in ones. It actually suggests one on my screen so I'm just going to leave that if it doesn't on yours for whatever reason type in one equals and then equals and then you will have on your screen two columns the first column will give you all the x coordinates so if you just um arrow down using your directional pad It'll go from negative three all the way down to positive three. They're already there. It's the y coordinates we want, and they're in the second column, that f of x column. And you should have 11, 3, negative 3, negative 7, negative 9, negative 9, negative 7. So all you would need to do is fill in um that row with those y coordinates okay so very complicated but that would then enable you with that table of values to plot those points and draw the graph there's one for you to have a go at so if you just clear the screen just press the on button on your calculator and it'll have f of x equals and then see if you can type in that equation there see if you can follow the instructions for the example that i did and see what you get for those um y values again pause the video while you're working it out and then I'll show you the answers.
There you go. So that's what you should have got. Now we want to come out of that mode that we've been in. So this is good, good practice. So whatever you have on your screen at the moment, remember just press shift number nine. And then we're going to clear everything, so we need to clear all. So type number three. And then the equals for yes. And then the AC to clear the screen and we'll go back to the normal calculator mode. We don't want to be in the table mode uh, that we needed for the, the previous example. OK, so next bit changing decimal and fractions. Um, time. So that's your hours, minutes and seconds function that we've already mentioned. Um, so how can we use this function? So 2.5 hours is, hopefully we all know it's 2 hours and 30 minutes, not 2 hours and 5 minutes, but obviously you want to avoid that mistake. So we can use our calculator to convert the 2.5 hours into 2 hours and 30 minutes. So just go back there. what you need to do for this, so if you just type in 2.5 and then equals, you've got to press equals, it actually comes up as 5 over 2 on the calculator, that doesn't matter. If you then just click on this hours, minutes, seconds um, function, it should give you 2 hours, 30 minutes and 0 seconds. OK. So a couple of examples there. So if we maybe look at the one at the bottom, three and four fifths. So again, good practice of using the mixed numbers function on the calculator. So if you press shift and then the fraction button and type in three and four fifths. And then equals. So it's, it's converted that to 19 over five for me. If you then just press the hours, minutes, seconds button, it should come up as three hours, 48 minutes and zero seconds. OK, so that's how you change those times from hours into hours, minutes and seconds. Okay, if we wanted to do the reverse of that, to type in, um, so we'll just actually use the, the last example there, three hours and 48 minutes. So all you need to do for this one, you type three, then press the hours, minutes, seconds button, then 48, then the hours, minutes, seconds button, then press equals, so we've got to press equals, then press the hours, minutes, seconds button again, and it should change it to 3.8 hours. OK. So there's two for you to have a go at. One, converting from hours in hours and minutes. The second one, from hours and minutes into just hours. So pause your video and have a go at those two. There are the answers that you should have got. Next one we're going to look at is the recurring function. So that's where a, a digit is repeated or a, a collection of digits are repeated and you, you want to change it into a fraction. So if you were given, say, 0 0.7777 and you want to change that into a fraction, which is very useful. So what you need to do for this is, as we can see there, so you need to type in the zero point, first of all. Now, to get the recurring function on the calculator, it's here. So you need to press shift and then this x squared function. And it should appear on your screen as a little dot. And all you need to do where the prompt is, just type in seven. And if you press equals, so you should have 0 0.7 with a dot above it now, which just means the seven is recurring, is repeated. Press equals and it should give you seven over nine. 
If you press AC, there's a second one there. This time we can see that there's three digits that are recurring. So what we need to do for that is type the zero point again. And again, type in shift and then the x squared function for recurring. And all you need to do, it's just the 504 that's repeated. So just type them in, 504. And you'll see that there's a dot above the five and a dot above the four. And that just means the the pattern starts with the five and it ends with the four. So it just means 0 0.504, 504504504. So you don't need to type in anything else. Press equals and that gives you 56 over 111. There's two for you to have a go at. There's the answers. Reciprocal function on the calculator. So if you're asked to work out the reciprocal of eight, which just means one divided by eight. So you could just type that in on the calculator, one divided by eight equals, and you get the answer 0 0.125. But there is a reciprocal um, function on your calculator, and it's this function here. So for the example we've just mentioned, you would just type eight, then just type this reciprocal function and then press equals and it just gives you one over eight for the answer. And if you want the answer as a decimal, press the SD function and it converts it to 0 0.125. So two feet to have a go at. So again, pause those and see what you get for your answers. Okay. Those on the screen. So that's all the calculator skills um, I need to show you. Um, what I would say for any of these calculator skills that you found difficult, go back through the relevant slides and have another go. And if you still don't understand, then make sure that you ask your maths teacher. But hopefully you found the session today useful. Thank you.